So welcome everybody to today's webinar, how to choose a volunteer management software VMS solution with confidence. My name is Cameron Seger. I'm the software sales advisor at Better Impact. I hold a French degree, a master's of business administration, and I'm trained in business analysis, the latter of which really comes in handy for the type of work that we're considering today. I also have a background working in grants administration. I've done a lot of work with nonprofits from reception through to coordination uh, and have implemented information systems in a number of different organizations. In my present role, I support small to enterprise sized organizations right across Canada in both English and French. And I live in Hamilton, Ontario, which is where our head office is located. I live there with my ambitious wife, precocious toddler. And uh, in my spare time, uh, I love to get on the field and play ultimate Frisbee or uh, sit down around the table for some board games. I uh, love to get to know you a little bit as well. Um, if you like in the chat, you can enter your, uh, in your name, uh, the name of your organization. Uh, perhaps we'll make some connections today with somebody you'd like to work with uh, or network with uh, even after the session is through. And over the next couple slides, I'll have some questions for you, which you can respond to by uh, typing in the corresponding numbers. That first question is, have you ever used a volunteer management solution, volunteer management system or volunteer management software? Please type in one for yes, two for no, or three for you're not sure. All right, we've got some responses in. I'm actually really impressed how many of you have used a volunteer management system before. Um, and so we'll be exploring uh, today what a volunteer management system can do and how to choose one. Second question, what tool are you using the most to manage your volunteer program at this time? Uh, one for spreadsheets, two for a volunteer management system, or three for some other solution? If it's three, I'd love to know what it is. If it's two, you can let us know which VMS do you use. All right, lots of spreadsheets. That's what I expected. Oh yeah, and a mixed information system. See that one a lot where client management is involved. Yeah, spreadsheets are by and large the most common solution that people are using prior to switching over to a volunteer management system. Um, spreadsheets can be a useful solution. Of course, we already have them in our office suites, don't we, next to uh, to our words and our PowerPoints, we've got an Excel or a Google Sheets. Um, so it's the free solution, um, but we often run into pitfalls. It's not really designed for our needs and version control turns in to be a really prickly issue, doesn't it? Have you ever felt yourself uh, feeling like this? You know, how, how do you feel when you look at this person? Is she? She look overwhelmed or upset, uh, fatigued and frustrated. If you're ever feeling like this in your job, it might be that you've got the wrong tools for the job. Uh, and so you might be thinking there's got to be a better way and you're not alone. That's why you're all here today, isn't it? You're looking for some sort of improvement. Um, so the fact is the tools that we use for our job do matter. And to help illustrate this point, I've got a statistic on the next slide. Uh, in response to the question, have you ever become dissatisfied at work due to missing or mismatched software? More than half of the respondents said, yes. It's, it's more than half of employees are unhappy at work because of the software tools that they're using. 
Now, this statistic comes from G2.com's State of Software Happiness Report in 2019, just before the pandemic. G2 is a software review site where you can learn all about different kinds of software, including an entire category full of reviews and comparisons of volunteer management systems. So being provided with the right tools to perform the job plays into our level of job satisfaction. When the right tools are not in place, our level of efficiency and effectiveness decreases, and this can contribute to unhappiness in our roles. It's important to have the right tools for the job. So we know that project managers and accountants, sales and marketing professionals and others, they all have software that's designed for their roles and makes their work easier. Well, so can you. Software that's specifically designed for the work of volunteer engagement professionals or VEPs, um, that's what a volunteer management system is all about. Uh, an all-in-one solution, uh, the ideal one for your program, may include all the features you see here uh, and more. It could help you with recruiting so that the right people find out about the roles that you have to offer and are incentivized to apply to, to join. Uh, it could help you with screening potential volunteers so that the best ones are allowed to, to join your program. It could help you with training and onboarding. Maybe it's just tracking that these are completed and maybe it's actually contributing to delivering that training or onboarding within the software. It should definitely help you with scheduling volunteers into the many shifts that you need to fill. Hopefully it will help with your communications as well. Logging time, of course, that is all important and factors into the kinds of data that you'll want to track and report on and share that with all the stakeholders within your organization and maybe beyond. I know uh, in my work in nonprofits, the number of volunteers, the number of volunteer hours and the impact that they're having factors into grant applications as well. Now, some volunteer management systems also give functions to the volunteers. So you could be allowing them to apply online so that you will no longer need to do the data entry and the duplication of what they've added into their application forms. They could receive and send communications through the platform. They could sign up for vacancies, that is to say, um, jobs and opportunities and shifts that need to be filled. And then they can manage their own schedule. Some systems will allow them to both sign up and cancel at needed. Uh, they should also be able to update their profile information, contact information, or other aspects so that you don't have to do that for them. It's great if they can log their hours, report on their contributions, and there may be other features that your volunteers will benefit from as well. I don't think a spreadsheet can do all of that. Now, we're hoping that through this process, well, you'll be feeling more like this lady you see on screen. The VMS has a lot of benefits, better use of your time, better reporting, better communications and stakeholder engagement, better data security and confidentiality, data integrity as well, better value due to consolidating the number of systems that are in use without having such a big price tag better visibility of your program through the use of modern technology, which a more visible program should earn more applicants and more volunteers, better accessibility to data, and volunteer and staff morale should also improve. That's a lot of ways that things could get better. So to land at that better place, a change must happen. You can get there, I think you will get there, but you and your team must acknowledge that to do so requires change. It's been said that we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Therefore, it's important to recognize that how we think can be perpetuating the problems that we're experiencing and hindering us from getting to that desired state, the better place that we saw on the last slide. Are you and your team willing and ready to elevate your way of thinking to reach that desired state?
take a moment to talk about what may be preventing change. Attitudes, usually. Attitudes are our learned ways of responding to people and situations based on the beliefs, values, and assumptions we hold that are reflected in our behavior. On the slide, you can see some of the attitudes that you may find that you and your colleagues have been facing when contemplating a system change. Uh, often we hear that people can't afford software, and that may seem to be true on the surface, but if you get to dig into it and uh, find out what your current systems may be costing you in terms of correcting mistakes, for example, or duplicating effort and data entry, you may find that by consolidating into a purpose-built system, you will find more time to accomplish more. Some people fear that using software will take away from the personal touch. Um, it's been my impression that the opposite is true. As more of the systems can be automated and less duplication occurs, you should find yourself with more time to engage directly with your volunteers. Um, some are concerned that volunteers can't use technology. Well, I wonder, is that an assumption or can you prove that that's true? Have a look around at how many people are using smartphones or have a computer at home and just consider that they should be able to use a browser or an app-based volunteer management system to manage their own involvement. And for those of you who can't, there's no loss because you can continue to manage them as the exceptions rather than the rule. So if you want to distance yourselves from the problems being experienced to land in a better spot, change is the answer. So given that our attitudes can appear at different times throughout the journey to change, this message here is a reminder to check in with yourself and to ask your teammates to do so as well before, during, and beyond this journey, in terms of whether your attitudes are creating friction or flow in supporting the team's ability to get to your desired state. I'm sure that together you can reach your goal. So supporting all of that, today I'm gonna to share with you a template, a free template that you and your team can follow to make the process of finding your VMS very easy. We're going to try and reduce the heavy lifting for you and your team, reduce the uncertainty felt from wondering if you're on the right path or making the right decisions, and get you using better tools for your job. As others have done so before you, and so can you. Uh, using the right approach, you can and will do this. So let's, let's get into it. And we'll begin by defining our problem and setting our goals. There can be many challenges that you're experiencing, and the key here is to shed some light on the main problems. Not all of them. Um, some of them are going to be of greater priority due to their consequential impact on people and the organization. So we're going to figure out which are the most important. After this webinar, you're going to receive a copy of our VMS Buyer's Guide as well as worksheets to help you and your team on your journey to finding the right VMS. You'll see some pictures uh, from those worksheets on the next several slides. Uh, and the PDF that you'll receive is uh, fillable, it's a form. So you'll be able to type your responses into it directly, or of course you can print it out and, and do it on paper, whichever you prefer. Now on your worksheet, you can begin by brainstorming some of the problems being faced, such as spending too much time on data entry, uh, lack of data integrity, staff who are unable to access the information that they need to do their jobs, to make decisions, to fill the schedule, and more. You should seek input from team members in terms of what they view as problems. So you should think about asking volunteer services and the volunteers themselves, IT, your directors, and anyone else who has a vested interest in the success of your volunteer program and the, um, the organized collection and analysis of the data that your program generates. So you'll indicate here who is affected by this problem and what are the consequences if the problem isn't resolved. 
Will there be much volunteer turnover? Would there be failure to deliver on your mission? Damage the reputation of a person or program or organization or whatever else you might think of. And then identify the top one to three problems, which you'll include in your problem statement below. The proposed solution that we've entered on the final line is essentially what you're going to land on. But of course, you can reword it to your liking. Now, with a problem statement defined, we can identify the goal. Essentially, what you see on this slide to select a volunteer management system that our team is confident will solve our challenges and elevate our program to new heights of mission achievement. You can reword it to your liking. With your problem statement and goal known, you will have, um, you'll know what you're striving to achieve and you can get these in front of leadership for the thumbs up in support of your project. I've mentioned this before, it's a team effort to select a volunteer management system. Please don't try and go at it alone. Taking a solo approach to choosing a system that will be used by many people with different needs is surely a recipe for disaster and for not landing on the right software. Taking a team approach should net you better results because the team's needs will all have been taken into consideration. So who's on your team? Typically, we see any combination of these types of roles. Of course, the volunteer coordinator or manager, um, they're key users of the system. And so these roles must be consulted, included on the team, if not leading the team. Volunteers as well, they uh, have a vested interest in, um, in having the right solution in place. We recommend having no more than two on the team, one who is proficient in technology and as their foil, one who is not, so that you can consider their challenges and address them throughout the journey. Uh, inclusion, after all, should lead to better buy-in. IT is often also involved. This role can assess uh, the VMS for meeting system requirements and standards set by your organization, including data security or infrastructure needs. If you do not have an IT department or a staff member in-house, you should consider outsourcing this valuable resource for your project or scanning your volunteer base for the right expertise. Your executive director and or board of directors is likely to be interested. Depending on how your organization is structured, one or both of these tends to be the bookends of the VMS project. So they'll give you the thumbs up to begin. And after you've recommended, they will give you your thumbs up at the end to approve your selection. And finally, you might have a consultant or a project manager involved. Some organizations choose to lean on the expertise of an outside professional who's got experience in leading organizations through a system selection and change. If you've got the budget and you prefer this type of approach, make sure they have a seat at the table. So back to the worksheet, let's fill in who are the members of the project team and why are they involved? You can refer back to this and you can uh, make sure that it evolves as time goes on in case uh, there you have any turnover or seats at the table change. So now that we've identified who is on the team, we're going to lean on our team members to determine what our needs are. The vendor profile. This is a critical step. The needs assessment becomes the measuring stick against which each vendor is compared, and you're vetting more than this inanimate object that's known as a VMS. The company and the people who make up that company and make decisions that affect the product, um, they matter. Choose your tech partners wisely. So what goes into the vendor profile? Um, the stability of the vendor. How long have they been around? What's their decision-making process for product development? Do they offer a demo or a trial? Now, you may want to add in technological considerations. How well do the product and the people keep your data secure? Do they use two-factor authentication? Are they uh, certified with uh, a standard such as the ISO 27001 information security systems? Are they compliant with the privacy and accessibility requirements in your jurisdiction? How is data accessed? 
and other considerations. Think also about support. Uh, what is their, responses, uh, their responsiveness? What are their hours? Can you reach them by phone, by email, by online chat, or by some other means? Budget is going to be important, of course. Um, you'll want to find out what are the subscription and the one-time costs for the solutions you're considering. How does billing work? Are updates and upgrades included with the subscription? Are there any other services you may need to consider? Now, functional requirements. This is, shall we say, the meat and bones of your project. Does it accomplish what you need in the different areas, such as recruitment and communications, scheduling, reporting? Is there a volunteer portal? Is there a mobile app? Really, what are the features of this system? Next, usability. Is it intuitive and easy to use? Are there tutorials? What are the training materials like? Mm -hmm. And finally, scalability. You should consider what your future needs may be and will this software allow you to grow or to shrink your program, to add a new location or to spin off in some way? On your worksheet, you're going to see some pre-filled questions that you could use to gather information. And please know that you can add and subtract questions from this list. You'll likely update the worksheet over time. You'll also list out your needs for the various categories that we discussed, such as support, budget, usability, and features. So please track how well vendors meet those needs using the vendor one, vendor two, V3, V4, and V5 columns. This is gonna help you to keep them straight and to dispel that memory fog that comes from comparing several options at once. If you work with a business analyst or a project manager, um, I want you to know that they might refer to many of your feature needs as functional requirements and the needs for support, security, and infrastructure as non-functional requirements. This is pretty standard lingo in project management, uh, but it can be confusing the first time that you hear it. In developing your needs, you should also prioritize them. Think about what are your must-haves, your should-haves, and your nice-to-haves. A must-have is mandatory, and if it's missing, then you should be disqualifying that VMS candidate because it doesn't meet your needs you should be ruthless and unwavering on your must-haves. The should-haves are definitely important to you. They add value, and we really hope that we're gonna find them. But if they're not found, they're not necessarily a disqualification. And finally, your nice-to-haves. These are a bonus if you can find them, but they, pro they won't have an impact on your first round decision-making they may have an impact later on. Now let's get into the journey of your VMS selection. Your journey is gonna move through four stages, which in many cases will take between two to four months. First is determining who your VMS contenders will be. Second will be the demonstrations from those contenders. Third, testing out some contender systems during a trial period. And fourth, making your dis decision and subscribing. Stage one, we'll break this down into a few steps. First is your needs assessment. So we're building out the worksheet. We're deciding on our project team. We're listing our requirements and we're prioritizing them. This should take about a week, depending on the size of your organization. Larger institutions are likely to spend more time and involve more stakeholders in building this out. Step two is to review the needs assessment. This will again be up to your project team to discuss, revise, and finalize that document in order to prepare it for your vendor search. Vendor research will often be focused uh, on the IT and volunteer services teams 
who will look around on the internet and other sources. They'll ask their peers what they're using and come up with a list of possibilities. In column three, you'll see a link to volunteersoftwarecomparisons.com. This could be a helpful site to, as it lists many different volunteer management systems. It includes links to their websites and links to various review sites so that you can see all of these at a glance. You can visit their websites and you can go through to those review sites like G2 or Trustpilot and read more about the different solutions and what users have thought about them. Step four will be a vendor review and your first round shortlisting. Your project team will be involved. They'll discuss the merits of each, record their decisions, and determine who to invite to the next stage. In terms of shortlisting, we want to start with our technological requirements and then carry on to support functional and budgetary requirements. At the end of stage one, your project team will shortlist those contenders so that they're able to move on to stage two. On your worksheet, you'll be able to track who the vendor contenders were, which ones remain qualified, and should any of them be disqualified, you can record their reasons so that you have this both for your own reference and to share with that vendor should they inquire. Your second stage is the demonstration stage. You'll be in touch with vendors throughout this stage. In step one, the demo, um, you'll, you'll want to schedule the demonstrations with your vendors or else watch the videos that they've provided on their websites. Members with outstanding functional questions should be involved and watch these videos and keep a list of those questions so that you could clarify them with your vendor in a later step. This is likely to take anywhere from a half hour to a couple of hours, really depending on the complexity of each vendor and the detail of their demonstrations. In step two, your vendor review and the second round of shortlisting, your project team will be involved you'll discuss, record uh, your results and end up with a shorter list that you'll take into stage three. This is probably gonna be a couple hours long meeting as everyone is sure to have an opinion to share and everyone deserves to have that time to speak their mind. So what does that look like at the end of stage two? Your project team will shortlist those contenders to move on to stage three. On your worksheet, you'll see that you took three vendors to this stage, only two remain qualified. And for the one that's now disqualified, you've recorded your reasons why. We don't recommend taking any more than two into the next stage where you'll have a hands-on trial of the software. So stage three, again, we're splitting this into two steps. The first being the trial. And we're gonna involve any members of our project team who have usability questions. We might include a pilot team of volunteer coordinators and volunteers as well. Or we could use fake data to test different scenarios. We're gonna sign up for their system. We're gonna explore the features. We're gonna evaluate their training and support and answer as many of our questions to really get to the root of those functional requirements. And then in step two, we're gonna have a vendor review and another round of shortlisting. Your project team is involved, you're discussing and recording your decisions, and you'll select one vendor to take on to the next stage. By the way, that last stage we're guessing is gonna take about four weeks, but the duration of the trial period is likely to vary from one vendor to the next. Some will offer you one week, some will offer you one month, that will vary. At the end of stage three, your project team will now make its software selection. On your worksheet, you'll see that you've taken two vendors to this stage, one remains qualified and the other has now been disqualified and you've recorded the reasons why. The best volunteer management system for your team is what your team will now present to leadership for approval. Stage four, subscription. 
we're just about at the finish line. So we've recommended a solution to leadership. A project team member uh, is likely to be meeting with the executive director and or presenting to the board of directors. This could happen very quickly. Smaller and nimble organizations who report to an executive director um, could have a very fast decision. Larger organizations may have to wait um, for several weeks before they get a spot on the board of directors agenda. So you do want to plan ahead. Maybe you've already got time on the agenda that you booked a few months ago as you began this search. That's up to you. So throughout this process, we planned, we prepared, and then we executed that plan. By following all of these steps, you will choose wisely in the end with confidence. Of course, you still have work to do. There's loads of work left to do in transitioning your program into your new VMS, but change is imminent and this creates opportunity. Now, I mentioned uh, I'm a software sales advisor at Better Impact. We offer a volunteer management solution called Volunteer Impact. Volunteer Impact is here to help with features around online application forms, customizable volunteer profiles that you can fill with as many custom fields and qualifications and general interests as you require to track the personnel on your team. You can track training and onboarding through e-learning modules in which you'll load content and ask a series of multiple choice questions, granting them immediately a qualification that can unlock their access to new volunteer opportunities. You can integrate background checks or track them through custom fields. E-learning modules we've mentioned, scheduling is all important. Create activities, create shifts within those activities. Determine who is qualified to participate and release that to your team of volunteers so that they can sign up for those opportunities that are of greatest interest to them. You can text and email your volunteers. You can track hours and outcomes through feedback from volunteers. There is a volunteer portal available on the web at myimpactpage.com. And we also offer the My Impact app for Android and iOS devices. All that and more. We're fantastically rated. Our users love us. I invite you to go and read our reviews online on G2 and on Trustpilot. Um, we're moving into the Q&A phase in a moment. After the session is done, we'll be emailing you uh, a recording to the webinar, as well as the buyer's guide and the worksheets that I've been mentioning throughout this session. Those should come to your inbox within the next 24 hours. Um, if you are interested in uh, earning professional development units for your participation today, I'm gonna to share with you a link in the chat which you'll need to access before the session is done. This will allow you to request your VMS certificate, which attests to the hour that we've spent together today. Just a moment as I drop that in for you. Here you go, betterimpact.com forward slash VMS hyphen certificate. Take a moment, if you will, to click on that link and make sure you've got it loaded in your browsers. Okay, today's session has been how to choose a volunteer management software solution with confidence. Next month on March 1st, I will be leading another session, Is Volunteer Impact the Right Software for My Volunteer Organization? I'll be supported by Denise Hawken from the Ottawa Hospital, who will tell us about her VMS selection journey and the features that she likes most. And if that date doesn't work for you, go to our website, betterimpact.ca, and find the events section where you can learn about other webinars that are coming up that may be offered by my colleagues in other regions. We all have great stories to share. With that, I'll open up the floor to a Q&A. Um, 
You can use the chat to type your questions in. You can also try raising your hand. I'll try and respond to those in a timely manner. Those questions may be about the VMS selection journey. They may be about better oh, impact no. software. I'll be happy to help. If you don't get to, answer, to ask your question today, please contact me afterwards. You can email me at cam at betterimpact.ca or you can call me, as you see on screen, 1-800-844-1545, extension 116. I work out of the Eastern time zone. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? Please go ahead. quiet group today. Um, would anybody like to share what are some of the reasons that you decided to attend today's session? Uh, Cameron, it's Victoria here. Hi, Victoria. How are you today? Good. I was wondering if um, you have examples of um, some of your customers that have someone in the organization that's assigned to volunteer recruitment, acknowledgement and retention, but then there's like functional areas where they do the assignments. So do you mean somebody who has, um, whose role only uh, involves certain parts of the volunteer life cycle, so they may not need access to the entirety of the system? Yeah, like let's say the hospital example that there's certain people in development that um, would only use them for the annual fundraiser, or let's say at the hospital, there's only peop some people who would only use them for the gift shop, but mm. there's one central volunteer coordinator that's responsible okay. for recruiting and retention and performance management, that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's certainly a number of organizations that would operate in that way. Um, I'd have to cast about to find a specific example. Um, ways that our software supports that sort of situation uh, would be by setting up limited administrator profiles. Those are function-based profiles. One person could maybe change the status and edit the volunteer's profile, but they might not have access to configure the system or to work on the schedules. That, so that person might be involved with that recruitment and onboarding step. Another person might only have permissions to run reports. Maybe it's a board member who wants to see how the program's doing, but they're not involved in running it. Now, an alternative to that would be through our enterprise edition, you can group a number of sub-accounts together uh, under a common umbrella. Those sub-accounts could represent different sites or different programs within the organization, which are each run kind of somewhat independently, so it's a little bit siloed one from the other, so that the coordinators of uh, site A don't have access to the activities and the volunteers of site B. In that manner, you can enforce some confidentiality across those sub-accounts, but the people who administer the enterprise umbrella still can report on uh, all of the activities throughout. Does that get to your question? Thank you, that's great. Okay. Okay, some of the questions that we hear a lot um, are around pricing. If you're interested in pricing for volunteer impact, uh, you can go to betterimpact.ca and check out the pricing tab. We're very transparent about our pricing. You don't even need to give us our name, to, uh, your name, to get an idea of what it might cost you. Um, and of course, I can help you to build a quote as well if you want to explore some specific scenarios. On our website, you can also find a list of our features. 
and you can view demonstration videos. For Volunteer Impact, we have about 60 minutes worth of demonstrations. Those will take you through end to end so you can see both the administrator and the volunteer experience. And uh, if you'd like to know more beyond that, it's easy to book a meeting with me where we can discover or uh, discuss your needs and how those match to the features that we offer. My job as a software sales advisor is to make sure that you're fully informed and to guide you through your evaluation so that you can make the decision that's appropriate for your program. Well, it seems as though we're out of questions today. Um, if I'm wrong, please jump in. If not, I'd just like to thank you again for joining me today. Uh, keep an eye on your inbox for um, all the materials, the recording and the buyer's guide and the worksheets that I've promised you. And I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. <laughs>